Yo, what is going on, my fellow weebs? Kerno here. Welcome back to the channel. So today, I want to talk with you guys about something I feel like needs to kind of change before our gearing problem stops being as big of a problem it currently is in NGS. Um, before we jump to that, though, if you're new here, as always, my name is Kerno. I promote cover PSO2 content. Would much appreciate to subscribe as we work our way towards that 10k mark, hopefully, by the end of this year. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into this. So I'm gonna be real with you guys, I have probably sat down and recorded this video maybe four or five times, just because every time I sit down and record it, um, either I don't like where the conversation is going or it's gone on too long or whatever it happens to be. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to um, my thoughts on the matter, something I'm very passionate about and something I feel like um, if is not explained correctly can be very, very easily misconstrued. And I have a big problem with thinking about people's reactions to what I have to say before I even say it. And it forces me almost into a situation where I over explain or I explain things ahead of time, um, basically trying to deal with the probability of someone having a reaction a specific way. So, and I'm kind of doing that right now and I have to stop myself from it, but essentially what that means is I, I wanna talk with you guys about something I think would be very helpful and beneficial to the game. But I also want you guys to understand it from my perspective. So I'm trying to do my best to explain it um, in a way that it can be understood. Uh, it's a problem that I have personally that I've dealt with for a very long time where I, I just, I don't know, man, I, I try to, I don't want to come off as like, you have to agree with me, but a lot of times when I don't take the extra time to explain it per, like very well, um, I see exactly what I feared would be the conversation topics that I know I addressed. Um, so it, it's a lot of rambling at the very beginning of the video, but hopefully this comes off in a way that um, I intended to. I don't, I don't know how else to explain that. Um, and there's a bit of a disclaimer involved. Uh, there's a few disclaimers. First and foremost, uh, I know personally the difference, at least that I have, between what I think is going to be good for the game versus what I personally want for the game. I feel like that's a very important distinction to make when you talk about video games as a content creator in general, or even if you're talking about them on a large scale, because you can't look at something from the perspective of what you just want as a player. If I mean, granted, you, you can, yes, but then if you are surprised that things aren't going your specific way, you have to understand that the games are not made just for you. They're made for a large audience. So for players who want a game to be a specific thing for them, unless you're a part of a large conglomerate of players, it's going to be a situation where you're likely going to be looking at it from your own perspective and not for you know the health of the game. And if you're looking at it for the perspective of like a ton of people agree with me and I like everyone wants this, well, then you're looking at it from the health of the game now, not just from your own perspective. It just happens to align with the health of the game, basically. So that's the first thing. The second is, is that this in no way is saying that you guys have to play the way that I'm telling you have to play. Everyone has different ways of enjoying games. And if you personally are not infringing on anyone else's enjoyment of the game itself, then what you're doing is totally valid. Maybe you're someone, this is an example, someone who just plays the story, does creative spaces, hangs up with their friends and plays line strike or something. Well, it doesn't really matter what you, you choose to do in the game itself. As far as gearing is concerned, it doesn't really play a part with anyone else's like enjoyment of the game itself, right? If you're playing with just your friends, maybe, and they're totally fine with it, then you're not hurting anyone else's enjoyment of the game. It's when you start playing with others, you're, you know, going into urgent quests, you're going into a lot of different content and things like that. That's when, you know, what you do when it comes to gearing does affect others around you. So it's an important conversation topic to have to understand from the perspective of that. Yes, this, this does affect others around you. While you personally may think it doesn't matter very much, it to those people it might and that's important to understand too you can disagree with it that's totally fine but that that's the reality of the situation that you're looking at when you play an mmo if that's something that you personally don't want to deal with then that's when people usually recommend playing single player games or um just multiplayer in general with people that you personally decide to play with that's kind of that, that overall thought process um not to say that i personally agree with it but that's the thought process that exists for live service slash mmos in general um but i digress how does that work into the situation we're ta currently talking about so PSO2 has a bit of a problem when it comes to gearing. And one thing to understand about PSO2's gearing is it is probably the most convoluted out of all MMOs that are currently on the market right now. And you're probably thinking it's not that difficult. And you're right, it's not once you understand it. It's not super difficult to understand, but you have to do put some you, you do have to put some effort into understanding it. And you also have to understand that there's a lot more to it than other games actually have. A piece of gear in PSO2 is nothing until it goes through all of the systems. You can buy a Wingard off the market if you want to say spend 40 mil on or something like that, whatever. That base Wingard is nothing 
I can take a base weapon and upgrade and set it all up and it would absolutely crush that Wingard. Um, and it could be a one star weapon. That's something to keep in mind is that gear does not just stand on its own. It has to go through all the systems, upgrading it, unlocking potential, adding augments. All of those things are important to make gear have the power that it has. And all of those systems interact with one common denominator, Masetta. Masetta is involved in everything, and it is the primary currency that's used for the game itself. And the reason why that's an issue is because it's the primary currency that's used for a lot of things in the game itself. All of your fashion, Masetta is a big part of it. Seeing as you can purchase things off, or you can, you know, of course, spend real money to get AC, to scratch, to get items, and then sell them on the market, Masetta is what players are paying for it. And people always have, and this isn't just in PSO2, this is in MMOs in general. People will always tell you fashion is the end game or fashion over function. And if you have to tell people to decide between those two things, in most cases, they're going to lead more in the fashion the fashion line. Now, granted, everyone has like their own thresholds. I personally have mine where I first have to look in a way that I find that is, you know, decent, that is passable. Then I put everything else into my gearing. And once that's done, I go back into fashion to look awesome, like look amazing over the top, whatever, right? Like it's, it's a barometer back and forth and it's different for everyone. Everyone has their own cutoffs for it. Some people go very hard in one direction, others go very hard in the other, um, and it, there's no right or wrong way to do that process. It's up to the player individually. So it's almost pointless to have the argument that people have to do one thing versus another because they quite literally just won't. It's not something that'll ever happen. Everyone's different in this sort of regard. So the issue is, is that the currency is shared across those two things, and that currency needs to change. I'm not saying remove the currency. I'm saying change the currency. The problem we have is that Masetta is used for all these things. What if it wasn't? What if it was a different currency altogether? That's my proposal is we have a currency that's used in place of Masetta for a lot of these things for the upgrade paths. Now, granted, we do still use some currency, right? We use some materials, but the currency is the issue. The currency that we could get could be something that isn't Masetta. Maybe it's something we get doing our dailies. Maybe it's something we get while doing urgent quests, while queuing for content. Maybe it's something that has already existed as a system. That's right. We're in Final Fantasy 14 and they already do this. In 14, there's a currency called tombstones and tombstones are provided to you for doing basically anything in game beta more or less now granted it's more complicated than that i'm not going to get into nuances because we'll be here all freaking day but essentially as you do content in final fantasy 14 they give you tombstones and those tombstones are used for purchasing your gear now yes there are points where you can transfer these tombstones into gil which is their currency um but the primary focus of tombstones is the gearing process and it is leveled towards that um as it comes out so like, you know, the current high end tombstone is heliometry. I haven't been playing recently, as you can see, um, so I don't have anything towards my weekly progress on this right now. But heliometry is used to get currently the higher tier gear in the game, not the absolute best, but it goes towards getting the best gear in the game. And it is part of the primary upgrade path for you. And that is all that it's used for. Nothing else. You're not trading this in for money, you're not trading this in. You're not deciding on using this for fashion versus anything else. I mean, you could make the argument that you pick a certain piece of gear because of the fashion, whatever, but that's not the point. This only goes towards that, and it's decoupled from Gil. And that's not to say that Gil is completely useless. I know people like to say in 14 that Gil is completely pointless and is not used for anything. But if that were the case, then we would all be billionaires and no one would be chasing Gil nearly as much. Gil is still useful. Um, you still do use it for things in game, but it is not the primary currency used while upgrading your gear. In 14, however, you have to keep in mind that their gearing system is much simpler than Final Fantasy or than um, PSO2. Their gear, you pick up a weapon, it has most of its stats already there. It's already item level 700, it's already level 100, you know? It's already got most of the stuff, the only thing you're adding to it is like Materia, which is kind of like our augments, except on a much lower scale. Um, most of the power comes from the weapon itself, and then, you know, the Materia gives it a little bit of an extra oomph on top of that as well. So their system's a bit different. It's not as convoluted, it doesn't have as many Customization. And it's worth mentioning that like PSO2, it the gear is customizable to an extent, right? Like you can choose if you want to go more offensive, if you want to go more defensive with more HP, if you want to go more utility with more PP, or if you want to sacrifice all of that for just pushing as much damage as possible, right? That's something you get to decide 
when you're augmenting. And of course, there's gonna always be the mathematical right choice. Um, however, there's a decision you can personally make that kind of fits your play style overall that doesn't exist in a lot of these other games. Where they've gone a bit more simplistic in route, they're able to um, not have you go through all those systems. PSO2, uh, you could argue that that's part of the charm. That's, that's the good portion of it itself. And I do agree with that to an extent. However, you also have to remember that we're looking at this from the perspective of not just ourselves, but players in, in a whole. And there are a large number of players that are like, hey, if I just get a piece of gear, why can't that gear just already have the power that it's supposed to have, right? Like, why make it so difficult? Why add all these extra systems in? And that's totally a reasonable thought process to have. You could, I mean, that, that totally makes sense. And if you're coming from the perspective of, well, you know, that's just not what this game is. Um, you know, we want our game to be this way, so on and so forth. That's how a lot of games die by not being adaptive. You want to adapt to the majority of your player base without alienating your other portion of your player base. It's a very fine line you have to walk. And I feel like PSO2 could walk this line a bit more in the other direction with this tombstone change or with, with the currency change, right? Imagine if instead of you spending a ton of Masetta to potential unlock your weapon, to limit break your weapon, to get all of the augment slots that you needed, there was a currency you got while playing the game that you used that currency instead. Granted, yeah, you still have to spend money on your augment, sure. You still have to spend money on the weapon, absolutely. However, now upgrading the weapon, getting its power going, getting the slots to put the augments in, now you're not spending Masetta on it. Now you can spend this currency that's specifically put into place for this one thing alone, and you're incentivized to maybe get another weapon. They, they, they've already, they very obviously understand that this is a problem because of the whole LC augment situation where LC augments started popping up to alleviate the process of players having to re-augment their gear and those augments being super expensive and fluctuating in price so often. They're aware that's an issue. They're also aware that the Masetta is an issue because they consistently do events where Masetta costs are slashed, where gear comes pre-upgraded, it comes pre-augmented, right? So this is obvious part of the problem. This solution would be widespread and it would be, in my opinion, a much better overall system for us to interact with. At the end of the day, would it fix all the problems? No, it would not. There's no, there's very few one solutions that'll fix all of your problems when it comes to gaming in, in general. It'll be a bit of a, of a, of a shift, but I think it'll be a shift in a good way that wouldn't affect players from a market perspective. Because there are some players that, you know, they do interact with the market um, for this process. Now, granted, there would be some people that would be affected that sell, um, that sell fodders for upgrading, right? Like maybe those people would specifically be affected. But at the end of the day, it's something I feel like would be a fantastic positive change for PSO2. Drop the Masetta cost and give us a different currency. On top of that, you could even argue that it would incentivize players to do other pieces of content more regularly. Um, imagine if we had like a daily reward for queuing into a specific piece of content and that reward would give us a currency that we could use for upgrading our weapons and stuff like that. That way you would stack that currency up and use that for other things as well. Um, this is something that players have actually talked about wanting for, I mean, people talk about the whole Zig weapon situation. For those who don't know, there was a, a um, an NPC back in base PSO2 where you took him a currency, uh, it, because this currency of course would change, but you took him a currency for the current tier weapon that would come from the current piece of content to make that weapon, right? Like this was a very popular thing that people liked a lot when it first came around because it decoupled the Masetta portion. You didn't have to worry about buying your weapon off of the market. Granted, back in base PSO2, you just, you didn't anyway, because a lot of weapons just weren't sellable, but players could then go in and take that currency and get their weapon and build their weapon up just by utilizing that currency, like playing the current tier of content would give them the currency and that currency was only used for that one thing. By making currencies specific to that one thing, you then give value to that currency, you give value to that piece of content if your overall goal is to get that item. Players are very obviously like this, like this is a thing that a lot of people talk about all the time. And I mean, like consistently, not just like, oh, it comes up every once in a while. People talk about wanting build up weapons or weapons that you don't have to spend money on or weapons that you can you can essentially get by just playing the game in general and get most of their power just by enjoying the game. So it's something that I feel like is going to be an overall positive change something that could be a very huge benefit to the game 
if we went in that direction. And again, it's not perfect. PSO2 has its struggles. Even 14 has its struggles in the gearing system where their horizontal gearing progression is kind of shit. Like they, they don't have a lot of good horizontal choices. There's only like one path into everything. And for a lot of players, that's super boring. Um, you could also be coming from a perspective where you feel like players should have to work super hard for all of their gear. One thing to mention is PSO2 is a very casual game. I think you should have to work hard for the very top echelon of your gear. I think that from a casual perspective for a casual game, the midpoint should be pretty easy to hit. Like it should be fairly straightforward. It should be something that as you just play the game, you just sort of get. Um, so if you believe personally that it should be the other way around, it should be more difficult for every single, like every single upgrade should be fought for tooth and nail. I don't think PSO2 is the game for you. There are games like that exist, but I think it's very unhealthy to look at things from a perspective um, where you feel like a game should be a specific way that it very obviously just is not pushing in that direction. This is me looking at it from the perspective of kind of working with the casual player base while also not punishing the hardcore player base. Um, I think that the top end should require quite a bit of work, but the mid end to low end should not be that difficult to hit. And at the moment, while it's not difficult, it is cumbersome, it is time consuming, and it is expensive. That's pretty much it. That's all I've got for you guys today. Hopefully that came across correctly, guys. I mean, I, I do put a lot of thought into these videos when it comes to trying to explain my th overall thought process and what I feel like is going to be good for the game. I'm mostly making these videos because I want to have a um, more or less a compendium that I can refer to whenever someone asks my opinion about these sort of things. So these will likely be uh, like commands in my Twitch chat whenever someone's asking about this, that way we don't have to have these topics and these conversations over and over and over again. I will likely update how I feel about this as time goes on when they do make changes. I think this would be amazing for the game overall. Imagine a world where you just play and get that currency and that currency is what's used for upgrading your game. How many of you guys would have more weapons that would play more classes that would actually put more time into your gear if you could get a plus 90 weapon that didn't cost you three mil every time you wanted to get it? Right? Like imagine getting a weapon and then you didn't have to spend three to four mil to fully unlock it. Like you could use LC augments, right? Like we already have those augments in place. We have like other augment choices that you can make for your gear. And I, I mean, dude, I can tell you right now, myself personally, I would have probably a weapon for every class, at least LC augment at this point in time, like straight up. But it's like at the first at first you would make, of course, your main weapon, you'd get your main units taken care of. But I would be highly incentivized to make units that fit across the board for every single class. Like I would make sure that I have like, you know, all potency units and I would have multiple sets of weapons. I would have a weapon for every single class that would be able to play everything and I'd be able to enjoy everything. But the fact that it costs you upwards of three to four mil, while it's not insanely expensive or unreasonable to be able to get that amount of money in a reasonable amount of time, it fully detracts from me wanting to make all of those weapons. And I feel like it's kind of silly to have that problem exist when it could be very easily solved. But what would you guys do in my position? What do you think would be the best way of dealing with this situation? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Like if you enjoyed the video, so if you want to keep up with more, thanks to the channel members. You guys are fantastic, and I will see you wonderful individuals tomorrow. Take care, my friends. Peace out.